What up, YouTube? Crash Wilcox. So we know two things for sure about Intel. They make great CPUs, but those CPUs have crap integrated graphics, right? Well, that's what we're gonna check out in this video here. So uh, if, in case you don't know, pretty much every Intel CPU comes with integrated graphics. Unless you see a CPU that has the F, uh, F in the title, so you know maybe a i9-9900KF, that F would denote that it doesn't have integrated graphics. So everything aside from that, whether there's a letter at the end of it or not, it's going to have integrated graphics. And you know at least for the ninth generation Intel CPUs, those are going to be your UHD 630, your ultra high definition 630. That's going to be the graphics processor that is in that CPU. And if you want to know a little bit more about what integrated graphics are, you can go ahead and check out the link up here to my video uh, breaking down CPUs. You go through that in there. But in this video, we're just going to run through a few quick benchmarks to kind of see what exactly you could actually get out of Intel's integrated C or integrated graphics. See if it's actually something where you can possibly play some games, do that sort of thing. And then once that's done, I'll be closing the video just with some of my thoughts on when I think it might be worthwhile to go with the integrated graphics. But um, with that being said, we're just this is going to be a quick video. We're just going to jump into some benchmarks and then I'm going to leave with a few parting shots. So stick around to the end. I'd really appreciate it. And if you got the time, please like this video, subscribe to the channel. Um, hit the bell notification. I try to have videos coming out at least once a week. So go ahead and hit that notification so you don't miss a video. I would appreciate it. All right, let's get to it. All right, so first up here, we're looking at CSGO. Um, I do not play CSGO, so forgive me of how embarrassingly bad this is. But just running through here, settings, they're just going to go straight to low. I mean, on everything. I think I forget to turn down uh, the shader detail or something like that, but uh, pretty much just dropping everything to low. Now keep in mind, this is running on an i3-9100 um, on a B365 motherboard. Um, you know, four core, four thread. You can see up in the top, it's got, um, for RAM, it's got one stick of eight gigabytes of RAM. I believe it's 3000 megahertz RAM. So not terrible there. And I don't know how to play CSGO, so I don't know if Dust 2, what I clicked on, I don't know, man. Um, I'm not even sure how to play this game. Literally downloaded it for this benchmark, so, um, if I do not do CSGO justice, my bad. So you can see getting ready to start up here. And again, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just clicking on things and buying stuff. But I mean, you can see right now we're sitting at the low 20s uh, FPS, which not great for first person shooters when you actually, you know, sit down and watch some graphics cards. Uh, reviews and they're doing CSGO. <clears throat> it's not uncommon to see that in the 200 to 300 FPS range. So probably doesn't make you very, very competitive uh, here in CSGO. And also, yeah, I just got schwack there. My, I think my mouse settings were like super low on sensitivity. Not that that's any excuse. I probably would have got killed anyways, but uh, I switched it here. Um, it was pretty low. Um, and I don't even think I stuck around to play another bit of the match here. I mean, 20 FPS on CSGO is, in my mind, not playable. Um, I would say this is something you should not be looking to get into if you're using st strictly an Intel... Um, CPU and you can see it's still only using you know two cores so it's not like it's core limited or anything but um, not very good so let's move on to the next game all right
right, so next up here, I'm going to jump into some Fortnite. Um, you can see just jumping in here, turning everything to low. Um, because I don't think you <laughs> should really be shooting for much higher than that when it comes to a game like this. And in reality, I, I will put this in the class of CSGO that this is not really playable um, on a, uh, at least an i3 with integrated graphics only. It does not really work. So you can see just jumping in here and just the loading screen. Um, I mean, we're sitting in the bounce between 20 and, you know, 40 or whatever, and it's pretty glitchy. And this is at what the actual, you know, experience playing was like. It was not smooth. It was stuttery and glitchy. Um, you know, because sometimes FPS doesn't tell the whole story. Um, just sometimes it's smoothness. And then this will happen. Um, yep, the game just crashes. So get this thing loaded back up. And then back in here and the uh, getting ready to jump out. Again, much like CSGO, I don't play Fortnite. So uh, again, I have little to no idea what I'm doing. I have played it a little bit in the past, but um, it's generally for a benchmark and that's about it. I am a fan of the Borderlands 3 skin though. That is, that's nice, that's nice. Thought that I could maybe drop in here. That was not the case. My biggest problem with Fortnite, or really any Battle Royale, and there it goes, it crashes again. So um, I'll get to my disdain for Battle Royales later. But the game crashed, so I would largely say Fortnite, much like CSGO, is unplayable on Intel's integrated GPU, at least as far as an i3-9100 goes. So let's move on to maybe some games that are a little more playable. So first up, yep, we got Minecraft. Um, everybody's favorite. Can play on a potato. So just going in here, again, don't really know how to play Minecraft. Don't really know how to set things up properly. So I'm literally just gonna leave it as it stands and see how it performs. But I would say you can see it's smooth, um, not a lot of stuttery, you know, frames or broken frames or anything. The game just seems to run pretty well. So I would say if you are stuck with a Intel integrated GPU, like no dedicated graphics card, Minecraft is a game that you should maybe look into. It will play just fine um, using just the integrated GPU. So no need to sit and watch the rest of this. Minecraft is something you can look into uh, getting down on. All right, so next up is Dota 2. Um, and again, just downloaded this game for the benchmark. So you are watching me go through a tutorial. So pardon me for that. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys some ideas of different you know, genres of games and stuff like that. So didn't really mess with any of the graphic settings too much. Um, yep, just set it to the fastest, you know, best performance. Not really looking for graphics quality here. And just left it as DirectX 9. Um, not messing with that again. Low 
low 70s to high or mid 80s, you know, depending on what part of the game you're in, I think is doable. Um, you can see it doesn't look like stuttery or, um, you know, broken frames or tears or anything. It just looks like poor graphics because that's what we set it to. So, you know, you might be able to bump these graphics up a little bit. And... Yeah, so all in all, I think Dota 2 is a safe bet. Like I said, you could probably bump these graphics up if you needed to. Oh, Radiant Victory in the tutorial. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, now in the last game that we have here is Dota Underlords. So I think you could probably mix and match this with uh, Auto Chess or whatever League of Legends uh, chess game is. I'm sure that they're all roughly the same. And just a side note, if you've never played Auto Chess, Dota Underlords, or the League of Legends, they are a blast. Now, I haven't played this in a little while, so I'm rusty and I'm just trying to make a benchmark, but wonderful games. Um, I highly recommend them. But as you can see here, we're sitting anywhere between 60 and 80 FPS. Um, seems to be working pretty well. So again, you could probably bump these graphics up a little bit. Um, that's not the point of this, but you can see it's not stuttering, it's not glitchy or tearing or anything like that. So seems to be playing pretty well. Yeah, I don't think we need to go on much further with this. So. There you have it. I think the Minecraft, Dota 2s, Dota Underlords, you know, games like Auto Chess or League of Legends or, you know, that sort of thing are all perfectly playable. Now we start getting into things like CSGO and Fortnite, you're probably stressing a little too much on what's capable with integrated, you know, GPUs. So that's my take on that. All right, so that's the benchmarks. Will it play games? It'll play games, depending on what you want to play. You know, if you want to get into your uh, Dota 2s, like we saw, um, your Dota Underlords, or maybe your Auto Chess, um, League of Legends has whatever their chess game is. Um, those type of games, maybe even, I didn't you know, throw any benchmarks in here from some classic RPGs or something, you may be able to May, depending on how far back you go, you might be able to grab some of those and throw them in there. But it's possible you can get a little bit of gaming done on these integrated graphics. And I do think there's there's reason to rely on those in a certain instance. So obviously, um, we did all the benchmarking with the i3 um, 9100. And that was in a computer that I built um, just for my mom. It's a home office computer and she surfs the web on it, you know, watches some YouTube videos, emails, that sort of thing. And if you want to check that video out, it's right here um, or we'll have it in the description. Just a simple $400 home office computer. Um, so in that instance, integrated graphics, all you need. Don't waste your money on a graphics card if you're just going to be using this for simple internet surfing, that sort of thing. But the other instance where I could see this being used is if you are a intelligent buyer and you are buying your computer with the money you have and not, you know, going into debt to do it, then you can buy a CPU, you know, and make do, uh, I would say, until you can actually afford to put a graphics card in there. So, um, you know, just one of my tips as far as building a computer, I'm a big fan of investing heavily in your CPU, um, even if that means taking a step down in your graphics card, because that is something I think you could upgrade a little bit easier later on. 
So if you wanted to invest heavy in maybe a 9900K or coming here soon when the 10th gen comes out, and just make and do, I mean, again, you're not gonna be gaming hardcore or anything like that. You have to be playing your, you know, Borderlands or um, Call of Duties and that sort of thing. But if you can just make do, playing some League of Legends, some auto chess, um, something like that for the time being until you can afford, then I think that makes sense. I think it's better to, you know, suffer through just some Dota 2 for a little while rather than, you know, going a thousand dollars in debt so you can grab that um, 2080 Ti or whatever. That's just my opinion. You don't have to take my advice, but I think in those two instances, it makes sense and the integrated graphics are good enough. Um, and there's other benefits to the integrated graphics when you get into, you know, Intel's Quick Sync and stuff like that, but I'm not going to go into that here. Um, so I hope you guys like the video. Like I said, please like it. Subscribe to the channel, man. I'd love to see you guys around here some more. Leave something down in the comments if you have any idea of stuff you'd like to see me do rather than me just doing whatever the hell I feel like doing. I would appreciate that as well. All right, guys. God bless.